everybody, this is Angie from Torangie.com, and today I'm in Green Valley, or what we would also call the unincorporated little community of Ceres. And I have driven down this road a billion times. You've seen it in many of my videos. Um, this is basically the area I grew up in as a child. But I will be taking a left up here and going up Ceres Road. Now just up ahead on the left is the old Ceres Elementary School. And then on the right is the church. It's a, a Baptist church. And directly ahead of us is Monta Vista Cemetery. And I have videos of that cemetery too uh, on my YouTube channel. But there's the old elementary school. It shut down in 2019 after 94 years. And right here is where I'll be taking the left and going up Ceres Road. So this is like a little unincorporated little community. And this road actually comes out to Route 20 if you've never been on it before. It brings you out beside uh, Glenwood Park actually off of Route 20. So that's the Glenwood New Hope area. So this road is also referred to as the New Hope Ceres Road. I really do not have any information about Ceres or when the little unincorporated community was started or the early settlers. I'm, I'm, I don't have any of that information. I just have bits and pieces of information from Ceres School and I don't even have a full history of that. It was just the 94 years that it was open. My mother went there, of course I went there, but I do know that well, at least the years that I went to school there, the people that lived on what you would say the left side of Ceres School, they ended up typically going to Bluefield Middle or Bluefield High School. Or the people on the right side of the school that would have maybe lived up this road or further into Green Valley, they typically went to Princeton. Uh, Wikipedia says that Ceres is just south of Princeton, which is true, but it really it is just in the middle, in between Bluefield and Princeton. So kids kind of went to whichever school that they were closest to after leaving Ceres Elementary. The school closed due to a consolidation between Cumberland Heights, which is in Bluefield, and Ceres, and it's called Mountain View. But today there is uh, students from the Brush Fork area and Glenwood area going to Mountain View Elementary School, which honestly was not even a quarter mile away from Ceres Elementary to begin with. That's basically all I have to talk about with Ceres and that this is Ceres Road or New Hope Ceres Road. And I just wanted to show off this road. Of course, it's a little one lane road. You have to pull off to the side to let people by, but it's a it's a good road. It's a good country road to drive and take a little take a little tour of the area. So I wanted to show it off and where it actually comes out at. Uh, but we're going to talk about something else today that really has, well, nothing in particular to do with Ceres, but something very important to the state of West Virginia. If you were a student in West Virginia, you probably remember the Golden Horseshoe Test. Uh, it's a typical test that happens in eighth grade, and it's about the state of West Virginia. I remember taking the test in eighth grade. I remember studying and preparing for it and learning all about West Virginia history. So I figured I would talk to you about the Golden Horseshoe. It may uh, bring a smile to some of your all's faces who had forgot all about taking the test in eighth grade, or for those of you who are not from the area, learn about, uh, well, uh, one of the things that's important to West Virginia. One of the highlights of the eighth grade year is the opportunity for a student to become a knight or a lady of the Golden Horseshoe. This prestigious program takes the name from the Golden Horseshoes given to the early explorers of West Virginia. In 1716, the governor of the Virginia colony, Alexander Spotswood, saw the need for exploration of the land west of the Allegheny Mountains most of which is West Virginia, or now West Virginia. The governor organized a party of about 50 men and all pledged in Latin uh, the motto, which basically means, thus he swears to cross the mountains. The governor uh, presented each member of the party with a small golden horseshoe to commemorate the bravery of those who crossed the mountains into the area now known as West Virginia. And that began the golden horseshoe tradition. 
This historical tradition, which was revitalized in the 1920s to promote the study of state history, was an idea of forming West Virginia clubs, was proposed by Phil Connolly, an editor of the West Virginia Review. In late 1929, Mr. Connolly took his idea to the state superintendent of free schools, William C. Cook. Superintendent Cook believed that the State Department of Education should take the lead in promoting a comprehensive study of the state. He proposed expanding Connolly's idea by honoring the highest achieving students in the state uh, with an award. In 1930, some 2,736 clubs were organized with more than 48,000 students as members. The first Golden Horseshoe Ceremony was held in 1931. 87 students from 46 counties were honored as Knights and Ladies of the Golden Horseshoe. The Golden Horseshoe became known as a symbol of scholastic achievement and honor to honor students who excel in the study of West Virginia. Since that time, approximately 15,000 eighth grade students have received the Golden Pin in the shape of a horseshoe, much like the one that was given by Governor Spotswood some 300 years ago. This pin symbolizes the student's knowledge and understanding of their state's proud heritage. Each year, eighth grade students are honored for their knowledge of the state in a one-day ceremony held in Charleston. The Golden Horseshoe winners have outscored their classmates in school and countywide testing competitions and made top scores on a West Virginia Department of Education test, which measures their grasp of West Virginia studies. Students also write an essay focusing on some as aspect of West Virginia current events. A minimum of two students from each county, one student from each charter school, and one student from the West Virginia Schools for the Deaf and Blind at Romney are selected for the, reward, the award and the other 110 honorees are selected from the 55 counties based on each county's 8th grade population. While in Charleston to celebrate the Golden Horseshoe Day, the honorees have the opportunity to tour the state capitol and the West Virginia Culture Center. The high point of the Golden Horseshoe, Horseshoe Ceremony is the induction of the students into the Golden Horseshoe State or Golden Horseshoe Society. The state superintendent of schools presides over the induction ceremony where each student kneels and with a tap on the shoulder by a sword is dubbed a knight or a lady of the Golden Horseshoe Society. And then each, is, each student is presented with a Golden Horseshoe pin and that tradition continues today. So here's a few facts about it that I haven't mentioned. The Golden Horseshoe Test has been administered since 1931 and is the longest running program of its kind in any state. Recipients of the past seven decades include citizens from all walks of life, including state Supreme Court justices, legislatures, business leaders, educators, and attorneys. In conversations with the Department of Education officials, West Virginia native Homer Hickam indicated that he uh, regretted not one of his uh, biggest regrets was not winning the Golden Horseshoe as a student uh, and he was the author of October Sky if you all didn't realize that uh, there's a basically I got all this information off one of the West Virginia sites uh, the West, West Virginia Department of Education sites so if you were a past winner and you've lost your uh, golden horseshoe you can even fill out a form to get a replacement golden horseshoe I just thought it was really neat to run across this information because I remember studying for it in eighth grade and taking the test and of course I didn't become a lady of the golden horseshoe but I, I definitely remember taking the test and studying for it a lot they also have practice tests and quizzes on that site for well your children if you live in West Virginia and want to uh, have them prepare for their eighth grade uh, test on the Golden Horseshoe or if you just want to go back and see what you remember from back in the day. I thought that was just pretty neat. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This was just Ceres Road and I know I didn't have much information about Ceres but we're coming to the end and about to get on Route 20 here in the Glenwood area. So this is Angie from Torangie.com. Come to my website, read my blogs, 
make appointments so I can help you plan your next travel adventure. And I will continue making videos driving around West Virginia when I'm in the area. Talk to you all later.